think we'll go ahead and get started. Email. Call the meeting to order. Uh, the agenda is in front of everybody. We'll, if there's a, a motion to approve the order agenda, let me also say, however, I want to add an item. Um, we'll just talk a little bit about the grant round process redesign. So if we can add that to the end of the agenda, that would be great. So a motion to approve the agenda with that change would be good. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so the minutes are in the packet. A motion to approve unless there's changes would be good. Move to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we are privileged to have another performer here today. Pam Strait from Theater B is here to, I'm not certain exactly what you're gonna do, Pam, so come on up. <laughs> and if any of you haven't been to Theater B, it's a wonderful, I, I love the byline, uh, rearranging the furniture of your mind. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. That's, I, that's uh, we consider our mission in life to present ideas, to present subjects, things that our community needs to be talking about, and then talk about them. Let's rearrange the furniture. Today I'm here to do a small cutting from a play that we presented in May and June of this year. We staged A Beautiful Hell, based on a book of poetry by Carol Capon Ruchinsky, and arranged uh, for the stage by Laurie J. Baker. It was made possible by funding from the Humanities North Dakota, Lake Regions Arts Council, and Julie Burgum. We were so excited to do this original work. We actually toured it last year to uh, the Game Changer Conference in Bismarck and uh, the, the Changing the Game Symposium in uh, Grand Forks. I know I didn't give that the right name, but I, that is where we went. The work explores the ways that we deal with grief and loss including acceptance, laughter, tears, curiosity, even humor. So our production was presented in reader's theater style, which means we stood on stage, we moved around, but we had scripts in our hands, so you will forgive today that I have a script in my hand. And this is a short monologue from Lynn, a therapist from Compassionate Connections, a healing circle. Grief is confusing. Finding our way through it can seem an impossible task. We need other people around, but we really want them to leave us the hell alone. It's like being a ghost sometimes. It's like I think I need absolution, confession, connection. Connection, yes, even more than I need joy or good coffee. And that's a lot. I may be a therapist, but I am also here because I lost two children to death and I found healing in this group. I guess actually most people thought that I went back to work too soon. Not that they said that to me. They were way too scared of me to be that honest. They just raised their eyebrows or said things like, really, already? What else am I supposed to do? They said, are you sure? It's my trade, my skill. Why so soon? It is what I do. It is not unlike a factory worker, not unlike you. I can tell you it was not easy. But I never screamed at a middle-aged, middle-class client sobbing into my box of Kleenex because not once, 40 years ago and strapped with nine other kids, did his mother come to see him play basketball. And he was good, maybe the only thing he was ever really good at. In response to stories of swearing teenagers and aging, demanding parents, I was 
quiet, compassionate, empathic, articulate, because one of the lessons I learned, the lesson of, God damn it, the lesson of dying. is living until you do. So, the gods know nothing of too soon or too late, and all time is unraveled in heaven. We can hope a soft landing for us all. So I went back to work, and not once after another client's, should I stay or should I leave this marriage song, did I, Scream, who the hell cares? My babies are dead. <laughs> okay. That came out stronger than I thought. Eventually, it was the work itself that offered me my greatest healing work and time. Yeah, grief. Grief is confusing, but you can find healing. It takes time. And you have to put in the work. Thank you. Wow, powerful, Pam. Thank you very much. I did go and actually see the performance, and it's well worth the time and effort, so I would highly recommend it. All right. So the next item on the agenda, um, this is actually, I guess, kind of an annual meeting of sorts <laughs> where we turn over, um, actually, I think some people got reappointed, right, Be between last meeting and this meeting? Yes. Let's see, myself, Deb, yes, and Tracy. Yes. Okay, so um, this is kind of the beginning of the new year, and that also then includes uh, the election of officers. So I am stepping down since I've been at this for two years, and um, I think what we'll do here is just open up the floor to nominations. Um, I would hope that we would all kind of be geared towards the vice chair moving into the chair position because that's <laughs> kind of the <laughs> kind of the routine we want to start uh, or the pattern we want to start using. But by all means, we're open to any kind of nomination. So uh, nomination for chair is open at this point. I would like to nominate Deb Williams. All right, is there, are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Motion to unanimously, um, I guess, approve, uh, vote for, whatever, uh, Deb as chair would be in order. So moved. Is there a second? I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. <laughs> a well-run race. <laughs> she campaigned real hard. Uh, it was an expensive campaign, right? No, very. <laughs> so um, we will now open up the position of vice chair. I nominate Tracy Jordry for vice chair. Tracy has been nominated for vice chair. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? All right, motion. Somebody want to make? I move that we unanimously vote Tracy Jordry vice chair. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, I think next year, and we weren't, we didn't have our act together real well. Deb and I kind of um, served as a nominating committee, but 
we will open that up more this next year and uh, hopefully get some people other than the officers to do that. So um, I apologize for not being quite so organized this time. Okay, so you know this agenda is gonna be pretty short, but we're gonna talk a little bit about the work plan. And um, we've spent quite a few meetings going through it and assigning responsibilities, accountabilities, and um, what we will have at each meeting is a report. We're gonna really use this, hopefully, and Deb hopefully will follow um, as a Bible of sorts so that we are accountable to the items and um, we're seeing some movement forward on it. The staff is going to have a regular report and then also the commission, um, because each of us probably have a role with um, a piece of this work plan. So I'm gonna turn it over to Deb because she's really been kind of coordinating things um, as she is moving into this position this next year. So go for it, Deb. Thanks, Arlette. First, though, I'd like to thank you, Arlette, for your last two years of leadership. It's been an absolute pleasure to serve with you and thank you so much for you know really moving forward with the public art master plan i feel like you have positioned us in um, a place where we can really make a difference and i'm not sure it could happen without you so thank you very much and i'm happy to say that our light is staying with us she's not running off anywhere and um, she's taking on some pretty She's taking on some pretty big projects. She will continue to be our liaison with the Performing Arts Center. She will continue with the Capital Arts Project. Um, and she's also going to work on um, the evaluation piece of our work plan. So she's not going anywhere, <laughs> making sure of that. All right, and then first of all, I have to apologize. There's the two Denises I was not able to connect with. I didn't have updated um, contact information, so I was able to connect with you. I have uh, had sat down and had meetings with everybody else regarding their subcommittees, so I apologize, um, but I will want to get together with both of you before we take off and we can set something up. And same with you, John, because I think you and Denise are on the tourism thing together, and I think you are interested in evaluation along with Arlette, I believe. Okay, all right. So anyway, so we're, we're, we're just in beginning stages of this, so um, we're just going to have some baby steps, so I'm just going to start on the end. Um, with Tracy, Tracy and Mark um, are both um, working or, or starting the process of working with developers. So, sure, thank you. Yeah, um, I have reached out to the gentleman that we talked about um, specifically. Um, well, we met a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, two I think two weeks, yep. um, and started to just try and figure out like how can we engage the development community in a more meaningful way? How can we identify? what are some of the barriers of why they wouldn't necessarily initially want to interact um, in, you know, furthering the, the um, um, what am I trying to say, further the agenda, if you will, of the Arts and Culture Commission. And so we spent a lot of time just talking about what those potential obstacles could be and how to, to look at uh, opportunities of, of getting around that. And clearly, it, it is a case where we need to directly have communications with different developers, get different perspectives. Um, so we identified kind of a short list of our first tier of uh, people throughout town that we would like to start conversations with. Uh, both Mark and I had uh, different companies that we were uh, or had identified. I reached out to the gentleman from the company that we spoke of and I have not yet heard back from him. Oh. Um, he's a very busy gentleman, so I'm not concerned by that, but it's just gonna take a little time. Okay. Yeah, and I would say the same thing here. I've made contact, but just haven't communicated. We've made communication, but not connected yet. Okay. Can I just add, I was in that first meeting, and I just kind of wanted to add that we also talked about, um, and I, I know this hasn't, it's, it's really early for this to have happened, but just so the commission knows, we talked about um, involving the Fargo Park District, maybe in some way with uh, private development. Maybe there's a partnership that could be had there with the developers in the Fargo Parks in terms of, um, and that's who my contact is okay. with, and okay. that's the gentleman that I reached yeah. out to. Yeah. yeah. So it's more, yeah, so it's we're kind of pushing out a little bit. Um, the other um, hope with these meetings is that if any of you have any kind of input, you please, you know, jump in, whatever, you know, whatever you think of. OK. 
Okay. So Tracy has got funding. Tracy Wall Botney. Funding. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have much to report. That's fine. Okay. Um, if maybe I could get a baseline of, of what funding has been used to date, and I know city staff drives most of this, it would give me a base to start from, and then I can start to explore or um, uh, discover some other funding sources. And then I'm also going to use the link that you sent to the Minneapolis um, to kind of get some ideas as well and, and work with that. But I don't have anything to report at this time. I apologize. Okay, that's good. We're just we're we're just teeing yeah. it up, so it's it's all good. And do you, you guys do you understand what it is that she's needing, and is that going to be doable? Okay, great. Okay, Joe. Oh, uh, a greater presence on social media, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a uh, bit of a slow start uh, with the last week here. Uh, still trying to make contact with um, certain individuals that we had identified as potentially being on this, this subcommittee. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be a matter of um, designing some sort of strategy uh, to promote the arts um, and how to successfully do that uh, within, I think, our capabilities. And I just realized I meant to take a picture of our performance today and totally forgot to do it. Oh. Darn it. Okay, next time for sure. Okay. All right, I'm sorry. Anything else? Uh, nothing else. No. We don't even have anything to tweet yet, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna make something to tweet here real quick. Right. <laughs> okay, all right. And then Denise, I haven't had a chance to meet with, and John, and, and Denise are going to be working on tourism. I did visit with John a little bit about public art, and he had some um, ideas or uh, uh, public art opportunities, and we talked about that a little bit, and. So we'll get all that mixed in with the conversation as well. And then Denise uh, Odegaard here and Arlette are going to be working on the um, evaluation piece. And uh, again, didn't get a chance to pull that together yet. So kind of kind of late on the reporting, but I think that's fine. We've got lots, lot, long ways to go. So and thank all of you for, you know, what be you know your willingness to take on this extra work. Appreciate it. And if I could just add anything to that, just encouraging people to reach out to people in the community. Um, feel free to pull in you know, whatever key people you think would be, were, would be valuable in, in having involved. So we have that roster list of artists, but beyond that, anyone else too. So. Anybody at all. And in fact, I was thinking that perhaps it might be time for us to send out another call to the community for um, Volunteers who might be interested in sitting on sitting on that type mm -hmm. of a doing that type of work, mm -hmm. and maybe seeing as how we've kind of expanded quite a bit what we're doing, maybe we could just move it into other areas. So anybody that has names, please um, can send them to me, <laughs> and you have my contact info now. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Then there's one of the major initiatives. Um, is basically staff accountability. So somebody want to report on activities in the area of opportunities in regards to the public art possibilities and plan and a number of other items. Uh, yeah, so uh, I guess just for introductions for those on TV, I'm Nicole Crutchfield with the city planning office. And um, yeah, so uh, I just spent the last uh, five days in the Americans for the Arts Conference. And um, so that was uh, just uh, with our Arlette and Deb and uh, Dana Duval. And, uh, and probably the best thing about the conference is uh, the connection with uh, the uh, North Dakota um, Council of the Arts, um, the state office. And it's amazing how you have to go to Minneapolis to meet Bismarck people. <laughs> but um, actually, it was uh, fabulous connections with um, the Bismarck staff. And as well as uh, the first two days were the Public Art Network. Um, this is the first time I've been able to, I always thought the Public Art Network was another thing. And I didn't realize it was part of Americans for the Arts. And so um, it was, um, I was a panelist at the Public Art Network, not knowing I was a panelist at the Public Art Network. So um, did a little overview. My, on my uh, panel was also uh, the county administrator in uh, Los Angeles, 
uh, Los Angeles County and um, for the public arts administration there, as well as a fabulous public artist, uh, Marty Padinger um, from Maine, and who's um, recognized at a um, doing fabulous, fabulous work. Both of them I would love to bring to Fargo at some point to do a presentation or something. But um, in any case, uh, we really got a deep dive into the St. Paul um, Public Art Program and the Minneapolis Public Art Program, both of them uh, nationally recognized and amazing to have those resources. You heard a lot of um, briefing from uh, Deb and Arlette from the last um, commission meeting, so it won't go into that. Um, but along those lines, um, lots of conference sessions on evaluation and um, public art um, uh, searches, you know, as we do that search process. And um, uh, yeah, so um, just a kind of quick snapshot on that. I won't go into much more detail, and I'm sure Arlette and Deb will share more. Uh, other things I wanted to bring forward was um, the uh, last, uh, this past Monday at City Commission, we have a really fast moving project and I can't uh, overestimate how fast fast is. And um, that is the first phase of the Civic Plaza. And um, the first phase of the Civic Plaza, um, the second round of um, drawing development, um, concept development, um, uh, on Monday night at City Commission, we hired uh, Bishop Land Design, uh, Scott Bishop, who some of you have had an opportunity to meet. Um, he was our uh, landscape architect as part of the downtown and focus plan, and we um, secured his services for concept development for the entire plaza, but then as a spinoff of that project, he's doing that simultaneously as construction documents of phase one. Phase one is on a super tight timeline because of the placement of Sodbuster. Um, uh, the Sodbuster, the Louis Jimenez uh, sculpture, um, valued in half a million dollars plus, um, is uh, obviously a world-renowned um, piece of um, public art. I know um, uh, it's interesting reading its history and learning in the 70s, the city, um, to um, copy, um, paraphrase Commissioner Strand, in the, um, the 70s, the city of Fargo had the wherewithal to um, procure this work, and it was Louis Jimenez's first um, project, and um, probably maybe a presentation along that piece um, might be interesting to the Arts and Culture Commission. Uh, but the Plains Art Museum was able to secure a grant for restoration um, with the concept and declaration from the city of Fargo back in 2015 that the placement of the sculpture goes on the uh, City Hall Plaza. And so um, um, by fall of this year. And so um, given that we're still in design phase, um, uh, Commissioner Johnson would recognize that this is a really tight construction timeline and it'll be somewhat of a miracle if we could pull it off but one of those components that's going to hopefully make the miracle happen is that we're entering in what we call a QBS, a qualified bidders scenario and uh, what this means is basically in City Commission on Monday night um, uh, granted that first permit level of permission. So today, as of noon, uh, we released a request for qualifications for contractors to um, uh, a release for qualification for contractors uh, to present to submit um, proposals for entering into an agreement with the city of Fargo to provide um, professional construction services as well as potentially construction. Um, we're looking at about a million to a million and a half um, dollars of construction phasing. And that might sound, if you're like me, it's like, well, isn't it just a concrete plinth that we need to put Sodbuster on? No, it's much more detailed than that. And even as a landscape architect myself, uh, learning the um, faulty thinking in that regards. And so uh, Megan, uh, we're actually going to be clearing her deck of projects so she can project manage this project uh, with Scott Bishop and engineering so that we can um, uh, get this work done by um, end of September. So um, we're really excited that we got a 5-0 vote from the City Commission on Monday night. Ooh. And um, yes, so we're... <laughs> that is definitely worth an applause. And I think that shows credit towards um, actually Scott Bishop's work. And um, Scott Bishop's work really, if staff was leading this, there's no way you'd have a 5-0 vote. And, um, and Scott Bishop's work, I mean, I would really put him into one of the top 10 landscape architects in the country. And, um, and so it's pretty exciting work. So um, in any case, so what's gonna be very confusing is that we have two projects going on with the plaza. We have the concept development of the entire plaza, everything on this full block, um, which includes siting the Performing Arts Center, includes possibly what happens to this other uh, 
where you're parking right now, um, you know, what happens to that space, a bridge connecting across the river, or not necessarily across, but an overlook, um, which is part of our long-range master plans. So there's long-range master planning and really more detailed, including 4th Street and 2nd Avenue. That's one project. Another project is the construction documents and oversight of construction with the um, this first phase. So um, just um, for that clarity so you understand um, that there's two projects, even in the, internally to the City Hall, it's really easy to get confusing, uh, get confused, but we're excited about this and we're all keeping our fingers crossed that construction, procurement, and, um, and construction processes can all happen um, in the course of the rest of 2019. So that's the status of uh, Sodbuster. And then maybe lastly, uh, I just wanna give a quick update on Main Avenue, thanks to Mark Johnson and your email link that went to Dev, that came to us, that went to engineering, that went back to the DOT and came back to, to um, planning and then back to engineering. Um, uh, uh, we are now, I think, secured with a change order to get um, uh, at the minimum uh, electrical into the median of the main avenue um, roundabout as well as working with engineering and the dot about what other possible change orders we need um, to allow for public art in that median roundabout on second avenue and main and so again thanks to your outreach as part of the public processes and internal workings at staff it, it takes many people to and create a village and so um, so we're glad about that and working and then so this is a really what I mentioned to the executive committee a really good example of what that process looks like for integrating artists in the process so ideally um, so Main Avenue has been in design for 10 years literally 10 years ideally 10 years ago we would have had an artist at the table with engineering and the public and the community as part of this design process, and it wouldn't be a change order. And so, um, so in any case, uh, just a little placeholder on that process. That's something that Megan and I are working on along with uh, others in our office as we have those more robust conversations. Engineering, of course, a uh, completely different staff than it is today, completely different staff than it was 10 years ago, completely d different DOT staff than it was 10 years ago. And, frankly, completely different stakeholders on Main Avenue than it was on 10 years ago. And so um, with that understanding of um, process integration and multidisciplinary approach in construction and construction management, and so um, through your advocacy and um, planning discussions, um, we're continuing to work on improvements in those and use this as a case study for, for future work. So that's a quick uh, update. And then maybe lastly, um, for budget purposes, we did have our first um, presentation to um, the budget committee um, in August of um, this year. You, um, I think is scheduled for about August. Um, the mayor will be presenting his first um, presentation on the budget for 2020. We did ask for um, $30,000 an additional fee for public art to be set aside for Main Avenue. We know that's not enough for public art potentially on Main Avenue, but as a, as a placeholder to start to have that discussion, how do we finance public art? And understanding, you know, everybody involved wants public art as part of Main Avenue, but we need to talk about how do we finance that. We, have, we don't have those answers yet, but we did as a placeholder um, put that in the line as a request. Uh, we'll find out in August um, how that request fares out. So. Um, maybe just a quick snapshot of the planning department's operations. Oh my gosh, it's just fun to listen to that. <laughs> it's um, real exciting to see and hear about some of the conversations that are happening inside City Hall. And uh, yeah, that's great. Um, so could somebody just get us up to date in regards to the capital project? Is that the number of surveys that have come back and anything else? So the last correspondence I received, I think was about a week to a week and a half ago, and it was getting close to 500. I didn't, I don't have an up-to-date um, information, but really excited that was the goal, 500. So hopefully we're there um, at this point, and our next step is to coordinate um, just kind of everyone just to circle back based on what the findings were, the results of this survey, so. Everybody got the survey request, good. Send it Perfect. to all their friends. <laughs> okay, 
So the final agenda item that we have is um, just talking a little bit about the grant round, um, redesigning that process. This was kind of the first kind of reinitiation of this grant round, and we learned some lessons. One of them is um, having the artist that has submitted the proposal be a little bit more involved in the process, but it's also the name of the project. It's kind of an odd name, and people weren't recognizing what it was, as well as the application can probably be streamlined and less confusing. Um, so I guess, uh, I don't know, Deb, do you want anything specific discussed here or? Um, so one of the things that we talked about was maybe um, for the next round, for the fall round, first of all, we're gonna change the name and currently it's called Creative Capital Sponsorship. Sponsorship, yep. Yeah, so anybody that can come up with something better than that and i think every single one of us can we're just gonna it's we're gonna do something better than that so i mean any feedback on that would be more than welcome something that when the artist looks at the web page they know exactly that they're in the right place it was it was confusing and i think that's why we only got a handful of submissions one of the reasons um also um i'm going to based on um the people that i visited with at the Public Art Network Conference in Minneapolis. I visited with quite a few people from across the country regarding their procedures, and um, I'm gonna just kind of take a stab at it and um, put together a couple different scenarios for all of you to look at. Um, one of them is they don't even have the artist write anything up first. First, it's just an interview. And if they're selected, then they're given a stipend, and then they go write up a proposal. So they're not wasting, you know, they're not putting a huge amount of effort into something that's not going to go anywhere. That's just one option. So there'll be a couple different options. But I think what we want to talk about here tonight, or think about here tonight, is um, providing the artist with maybe a little more direction than what we have in the past. In the past, we've pretty much just said, whatever you want to do. Whatever you see, whatever you think, whatever you want to do. Now we're thinking that maybe we could give them a little more direction so that they could focus in a little tighter. Um, in our Public Art Master Plan, we have a series of themes. Um, that might be a place that we go where we choose something so that when we roll this, um, when we roll this out again, it'll be, it'll be tighter. And then also, this is where you know, it might be great to have more people in our pool because, you know, for, for the selection process. Uh, is that, yeah? I think so. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Um, so, Deb, I don't know if you've put any thought into the process for getting this redesigned. Does it need to be a smaller group? Is it gonna be between you and staff, or? I was gonna, unless somebody wants to work on it with me, I was just gonna do it with staff. So if anybody is interested, by all means, jump in. But you don't have to, okay? Anybody? And you'd come back to the commission. Yes. And back and, yeah. once, once, once I know that it's something that um, staff can, can live with, then we'll come back to the commission, and hopefully with more than one option so you can choose. Yeah. Anybody? Bueller? Is that something you could email to us that we could just all look at and give input on? Oh, yeah. We would do this beforehand so that we could discuss after it's been looked at. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I'm, I would like to get this done. Um, I would actually like to have, I, I would like us to be all on board in August because I think we're, because we have another grant round coming up for the last part of the year. So. You know, we haven't talked about this, but I'm assuming the dollars that weren't allocated the first time, is that going to be in the pool for the second time? Yeah. So there will be a fair amount of dollars to, to give out. Yeah. And you'll remember that from the last grant round, we did send two artists, we, we provided them with a stipend to refine their ideas and come back. So we do have, we're hopefully, we're hoping that we have those people will be coming back with, with, um, you know, something a little bit different, a little more palatable maybe to a selection commission, which will be different than the last selection committee. So we'll see. See how it goes. All right. Any questions or anything for 
I'm glad we're taking feedback from the community and, and reacting to it. Sometimes we don't go on and see the applications ourselves because we're not applying. So yeah. we don't know. We don't yeah. know. And yeah. so getting that's feedback a, from the public is super important. Right. And, well, that's how I found out. Is I went on to look at, look at it, and I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> because what I had been calling it, it wasn't there. So it was, yeah, I thought, oh, my goodness. Sure. Joe, I think you recognize that, too. Yes, uh, even the, the there wasn't a link. I, I saw the advertisement on Twitter, uh, but there was no clickable link. I had to hand type in uh, the, the long link that was on there. So I think when it comes to that process, um, I'd like to be a part of maybe mm -hmm. at least reviewing how we can make that applicable easy for artists to just two clicks or one click and, and they're they're at the application. Because even once we, we were at the at the, the page, I still wasn't sure if I was clicking on the the, the grant or whatever it was. Um, yep. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah. Okay. You do that. Observation. That's good. You do that part and I'll do the paperwork part. <laughs> um, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Any other business? Any public comments? Okay, um, so we are at the end of the agenda, and the next meeting is actually July 17th, and we don't have to have a motion to adjourn, so this is it, and we're done. <laughs>